Hi everyone, this is a continuation of Unit 2. I kind of thought it would be a really good idea to include a video just on the solutions to the practice that I included in the last video. And the idea is we're just still going to be continuing that practice of ionic versus covalent compounds looking at the formulas, looking at the nomenclature, and really trying to get comfortable with converting between the two. Now, um, in terms of where we are, we've already covered the basics here, and I ended with really a, a lot of information on, you know, what I would do in a face-to-face -face class. And so with that in mind, um, Remember, you do have these two helpful slides with if you are given the compound formula, you know, something like HCl, you can go through this and determine exactly how to name it according to uh, the IUPAC naming. So if it starts with an H, it's an acid. If it didn't, it would be over here. Is there an oxygen? Here, there is not. So it's going to be. Um, a binary acid where we start with hydro. We're going to use the root of the anion name. This is chlorine. So this is hydrochlor and then you end with ic acid. Um, and so this is just kind of a helpful slide for if you're given the formula how do you go about the name. And you know as always check your spelling, check that your capitalization. If in mom you write HCl like that it is wrong. Okay, um, if it is not spelled correctly, it is going to be wrong. So you really need to double check all of that because, I mean, it's either right or it's not. Okay, you also have this uh, flow chart where if you are given a name like, let's go with nitric acid, why not? Does the name include acid? Here it does. So it's got to start with an H. It, is there hydro? No. So then it's got to be a polyatomic ion. The fact that this ends with ic means it came from nitrate, came from the I, 8 ion. So it's going to be NO3, number, charge, total. We know that H has a charge of plus 1, nitrate has a charge of 1 minus. These already balance, so you just need one of each to go ahead and get that charge to cancel. And so we have HNO3, and this is kind of a hard slide to write on, but that would be our formula. Um, in, ma in, in Math Editor, if you're doing a discussion forum, um, it should be written just like this. You can use Math Editor to show your subscripts. If you're writing in MOM, it would be capital H, capital N, capital O. To indicate your subscript, you use an underscore and then the number three. If one of these is lowercase, I do think it counts it as wrong because it would be wrong. Um, so just make sure you are really being careful before you hit submit for your answers in both uh, my open math and in your discussion forums, okay? So let's get back to um, the examples I gave you at the end of the last video. Now, um, I had to guess how many of these slides I needed, so they may, there may be too many, maybe too few, but we'll just go with it. I also adjusted the order a little bit just because um, my OCD got the better of me and I wanted them to be, well, I wanted them to be in order. So, um, now remember, we're not pairing this lithium with fluorine, sodium with chlorine. We're going to pair every single one of these. And if I did it right, you have well over a hundred examples. And the idea is, just like with everything else, you really need to sit down and struggle. And if you struggle here, it's going to be better for you on the exam. If you just kind of are like, oh yeah, I kind of understand this, um, it could be bad for you later. Okay, So we're going to give the formula and the name for every single one of these pairings. Now, these are all ionic compounds. And I was really kind here because I gave you the charge so you don't have to go back to the periodic table and find out, oh, lithium has a plus one charge. Um, it's in group one. 
it's got a plus one charge. I just went ahead and wrote it here so I don't have to change screens quite as much. Um, for the exam, what on earth did I just touch? Okay, for the exam what I would do is say what is the formula for a compound that contains lithium and I don't know oxygen okay and so you would have to come up with the correct formula or I would give you the formula and ask you for the name so um, let's go ahead and start these so I'm gonna go ahead and start with my lithium compounds so I'm going to pair lithium with each of these. Now because this is an ionic compound, um, I am going to make my table for every single one. Well, at least for the first 50 or so. So for that we're going to have, you know, ion, number, charge, and total. And here I've got lithium and fluorine. Now this has a plus one charge. This is a uh, one minus charge, sorry. Notice the charge comes after the number. Um, I'm actually not sure why we do that, but I do know it is correct. It's just a designation. I think it's so that we don't um, add and subtract these. We are recognizing that it is a charge and not a mathematical problem here. So the idea is to make a neutral compound. These have to add up to be zero. And so we just need one of each because technically one and one already cancel. One times plus one is plus one. 1 times a charge of minus 1 is minus 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. And so this is going to be LIF. Now the name here, um, I will admit I am not always the best at spelling, so don't trust me. You want to make sure that you are completely correct here too. But this is a ionic compound, so there's not going to be any prefixes here. Um, we're going to name the first element by its element name, which is lithium. Fluorine becomes fluoride. Okay, so that's one down. Now let's look at lithium and chlorine. Here we have Li, Cl. Charge on lithium is plus one. Charge on chlorine, chlor chlor well, chlorine becoming an ion is chloride. It's in group seven, so it would be one minus. To cancel, we just need one of each. 1 times 1 is plus 1, 1 times a minus 1 is minus 1, that cancels to give 0. So this is our neutral compound, we just need Li and Cl. We don't write the ones because they are understood. LiCl, ionic compound, you name the first element by its element name, lithium. Lithium is not a transition metal, so we do not include a Roman numeral. No prefixes because it's not covalent, no Roman numeral because this is not a transition metal. Chlorine becomes chloride. Now at some point in the middle of all of these you are going to start to see a trend. When you see that trend you're on the right path. Um, some of you have to do 20 examples to see the pattern, some of you have to do 2,000 and you never quite get there. The idea is just like in the last video, you want to do as many of these as it takes for you to just be plain sick to death of them and for you to know the right answer the first time every time. So lithium now with oxygen. Lithium is in group 1 so it has a charge of plus 1. Oxygen is in group 6 so it's got a charge of 2 minus. So we need, in order to cancel here, lowest common denominator is 2. So we need two lithiums, one oxygen, to give 2 plus minus 2 to cancel to 0. So now this is Li2O. Again, lithium is not a transition metal, but it is a metal, so we do not use prefixes and we do not use Roman numerals. Lithium oxygen becomes, oops, oxide. Lithium with sulfur. Again, this is group one. This is group six. In order to cancel here, we need two here, one here. That's going to give us two plus minus two to cancel and give us our neutral compound. So this is Li2S for lithium sulfide. 
Notice guys, there are no charges included in my formulas. You get rid of those because now it is neutral. You do not write that. I don't know how many students I see try to write the, the charges in there. Once you've made a compound, it is neutral. It is no longer charged. Lithium with nitrogen. Here, this is in group one. Nitrogen is in group five, so it's three minus. In order to cancel, we need three lithiums, one nitrogen. Three times one is plus three. One times a negative three charge is minus three. Cancels to give zero. And so now we have Li3N for lithium nitride. Oops, there we go. So we're going to continue this. Um, I'm going to need way more slides than I thought I would. Ion number charge in total. Lithium with phosphorus. This is in group one. This is in group five. So again, we're going to need three lithiums, one phosphorus to give us our total charges that will cancel. And so this is Li3P for lithium. No Roman numeral, no prefixes. Phosphorus becomes phosphide. Lithium with hypoiodite here. Lithium, IO. Um, lithium has a charge of plus one because it's in group one. Hypoiodite has a charge of one minus because you memorize it. Um, you have to have those memorized before the exam or you're going to be in trouble, so make sure you have those ready. We just need one of each. The charges already cancel. Plus one, minus one, cancels to zero. So this is Li, capital I, O. Now name the first element by its element name. Lithium is just lithium. Again, guys, it is not going to be um, a transition metal. You don't change anything here. Anytime you have a polyatomic ion, you just name it by its name. And so hypoiodite is hypoiodite. So lithium hypoiodite is LiIO. For iodite, Li and IO2, plus one because it's in group one, minus one, or I'm sorry, the number, the positive should come back here, minus one because you've memorized it. Again, they already cancel, so you just need one of each, Li, IO2. We only need one of each, so, so there's no parentheses here. If you had a parenthesis, it would indicate you had two hypoiodites. So really be careful how you're writing this, okay? It's LiIO2, just like that. Lithium is still just lithium. Iodite is iodite. Lithium and iodate, plus one, one minus. So we just need one of each for it to cancel and make a neutral compound. So LiIO3, this is lithium iodate. Oops. Lithium and per iodate. This is plus one. This is one minus because you have it memorized. We just need one of each in order to have a nice neutral compound. So this is going to be LiIO4 for lithium per IO date. Now at this point we can kind of go into the sulfate, uh, sulfite and then sulfate. So ion, number, charge, and total. Actually let me do, yeah. So we have lithium and sulfite. This is plus one because it's in group one. Sulfite you're going to memorize as two negative. 
So we have 2 and 1 to give us a nice plus 2, minus 2 that will cancel and give us a neutral compound. Here we have Li2, SO3. No parentheses on the sulfite because there's only one of them. This is lithium. And then sulfite. Notice I'm not really trying to capitalize these. If you're in the middle of a sentence, it can be lowercase. If it's at the beginning of a sentence, capitalize it just like you would any other start to a sentence here. Lithium and sulfate. Plus one, two minus because you're going to memorize it. Again, we need two and one. Plus two, minus two. It's going to be lithium sulfate. That one letter changes everything. Make sure you're spelling things correctly, guys. Now, at this point, um, usually you go into sodium, and somewhere in the middle of sodium you start to see a trend, maybe. I'm going to come back for a second, and I'm going to indicate because sodium and lithium have the same charge, if we were to do sodium with fluorine, number, charge in total, plus one, minus one, actually charge of plus one plus, charge of one minus because it's in group seven, we're just going to need one of each. It's already going to cancel. It's the same as with lithium and fluorine, and so you would end up getting NaF for sodium fluoride. Same thing, guys. Sodium is not a nonmetal, so you know prefixes. It's not a transition metal, so no Roman numerals. What you're going to see is the only difference between lithium compounds and sodium compounds is everywhere you have an Li, it's going to be an F. I mean, Everywhere you have an Li, you have an Na. In the naming, the only difference is it's not going to be lithium, it's going to be sodium. The ending is still going to be the same. It's not coincidence that I chose these. I intentionally did this so that you would have to set up a similar table. Um, oops, I never even wrote this one, did I? Did I? Li2SO4. I did this the same way by including these two ions to really make sure you had some practice here, okay? So now let's move into our ions with 2 plus. I'm going to end my show and make some more slides because I'm going to need a lot more slides. Okay, that should keep us tidied for a little bit. Okay, so now let's go into magnesium and calcium. Again, guys, these are um, group two uh, metals. They are alkaline earth metals. They are not transition metals. We are not going to use a Roman numeral, and we are not going to um, use prefixes here. So let's go ahead and set these up. Um, I really like having everything set up the same way. Ion number, charge, and total. Let's go ahead and start with magnesium, Mg, and we're going to go with F as our first anion. So magnesium has a 2 plus charge because it's in group 2. Fluorine has a 1 minus charge because it's in group 7. 
the whole point of making a compound is to get a nice stable neutral compound and so the lowest common denominator here is two so we just have one magnesium two fluorines to give a total of positive two and minus two two minus two is zero so this is going to be mg f2 for magnesium hmm. and really these should not be capitalized so I'm going to go ahead and lowercase them fluoride fluorine becomes fluoride now if we go ahead and look at magnesium with chlorine mg cl magnesiums in group 2 so it's got a 2 plus charge chlorines in group 7 so it has a 1 minus charge lowest common denominator here is 2 so we've, we're just going to try and get our total column to 2 so we just need 1 magnesium 2 chloride ions 1 times 2 is plus 2 2 times minus 1 is minus 2 that cancels to give us a nice 0 so our formula here is Mg1 Cl2 for magnesium chlor chlorine becomes chloride now magnesium with oxygen Mg and O this is 2 plus because it's in group 2 this is 2 minus because it's in group 6 they already cancel so we just need two of each to give a um, plus 2 minus 2 to get a 0 nice neutral compound here Mg we need one O we need one so it's just MgO I really don't know why my thing is doing that magnesium oxygen becomes oxide magnesium with sulfur this is going to be 2 plus this is going to be 2 minus because it's in group 6 they already cancel so you end up with MgS for magnesium sulfur becomes sulfide okay so now let's do magnesium with nitrogen ion number charge and total mg and n this is plus uh, 2 plus because it's in group 2 3 minus because it's in group 5 lowest common denominator here is 6 so to make plus 6 and minus 6 we're going to need 3 magnesiums 2 nitrogens that means our formula is going to be mg 3 n 2 for magnesium nitride this is not nitrate or nitrite because it's not a polyatomic it's just nitrogen here magnesium with phosphorus again we have 2 plus because it's in group 2 3 minus because it's in group 5 lowest common denominator here is 6 so we're going to need 3 magnesiums 2 phosphorus to give plus 6 mm -hmm. minus 6 and cancels to be 0 it's going to be mg3 p2 for magnesium uh, there should be a bigger space there but I'm running out of room so magnesium phosphide now for magnesium with some of these polyatomics here we've got magnesium with hypoiodite this is plus two because it's in group two minus one because it's uh, well it's what you memorize lowest common denominator is two so we're going to have one magnesium two hypoiodite ions to give us plus two and minus two which will give us a nice neutral compound now we need two polyatomics we cannot write MgIO2 that just looks like magnesium iodite but a non correct formula because it doesn't balance so you need to use parentheses anytime you have more than one polyatomic so we're going to close that off put the two here 
this is magnesium hypoiodite. For iodite, Mg and Io2, 2 plus, 1 minus, Again, we need 1 and 2 to give us a nice neutral compound. This is going to be Mg parentheses IO2, close your parentheses, 2. That is going to be magnesium iodite. Now, guys, if you're entering this in mom, the way to do it in mom, now, if you're in discussion, use your math editor, make it look just like this. But if you're in my open math, MG, capital M, little g, parentheses, IO, close your parentheses, subscript by an underscore number two. Okay, so let's do IO date. Ion number charge in total, Mg, IO3, 2 plus, 1 minus, we need 1 and 2, gives us Mg, IO3, 2, this is magnesium, IO date. Mg and IO4 plus 2, 1 minus, we need 1 and 2, gives us Mg parentheses IO4, close your parentheses 2, for magnesium per IO date. Again, in mom, if you were had to enter this in my open mass, it would be MG, parentheses, capital I, capital O. To indicate your subscript, you're going to do underscore 4, close your parentheses, underscore 2. And that's how you would do it in mom. Um, that was just my thing. Okay, so let's do sulfite and sulfate. Mg with sulfite. Uh, sulfite is first. Plus 2, minus 2. Again, these already cancel, so we're already kind of neutral. We just need one of each. Mg SO3 is magnesium sulfate. Fight. Mg and SO4, 2 plus, 2 minus, they already cancel. So this is Mg SO4 for magnesium sulfate. Now, if you go back and you look at calcium. Calcium has the same charge. Again, it's an alkaline earth metal. It's not a transition metal. So you can honestly set up your charts when you do set up your charts. They're going to come out the exact same way. 2 plus with fluorine 1 minus. It's going to be CaF2 for calcium fluoride. CaCl2 for calcium chloride. CaO for calcium oxide. The ratio is going to end up being the exact same. The only difference is you're going to replace magnesium with calcium. So calcium phosphide is going to be Ca3P2. Same as all of these. Ca IO parentheses 2 is calcium hypoiodite. Calcium iodite is CA parentheses IO2, close your parentheses 2. 
all of these are going to look exactly the same. Calcium sulfite, calcium sulfate. Only difference is Mg has been replaced with Ca. That is it. Okay, so let's go in and look at aluminum. Aluminum, I think, um, is you know kind of unique in that it's the only metal that is not a transition metal that does a plus three. Um, you do experience it a few times in labs, so it's kind of important here. So here we've got ion, number, charge, and total. Aluminum, and we're going to go ahead and start at the very beginning with fluorine. This is 3 plus because it's in group 3. 1 minus because it's in group 7. Lowest common denominator here is 3, so we just need 1 aluminum, 3 fluorine. It's going to allow us to have a nice neutral compound, AlF3. And this is aluminum, fluoride. Careful of spelling, guys. If you flip the U and the O, it's flour-ide and not fluoride. Aluminum with chlorine. Again, 3 plus, 1 minus because it's in group 7. 1 and 3 is what we need. It's going to cancel. And so we have Al1Cl3. For aluminum chloride. Aluminum with oxygen. Here we've got 3 plus and 2 minus because this is in group 6. Lowest common denominator here is 6. So we need 2 aluminums, 3 oxygens. 2 times 3 is plus 6. 3 times a minus 2 is minus 6. That'll cancel to give 0. So we have Al2. O3 for aluminum oxide. Again, no Roman numerals, no prefixes here. Al and S plus 3 minus 2. Oops. The lowest common denominator is 6, so we need 2 and 3. gives us Al2S3 for aluminum sulfide. Now aluminum with nitrogen, ion, number, charge, and total. Al, N, this is plus 3 because it's in group 3, minus 3 because it's in group 5, so we just need one of each, it already cancels. So this is Al, capital A, lowercase l, capital N. You enter it any other way in either discussion or mom, it is incorrect. And this is aluminum, aluminum, nitrogen becomes nitride. Aluminum with phosphorus, this is plus 3. This is 3 minus. No clue what I am doing to make that line up here, but I'll figure it out at some point. Already cancels. So ALP is aluminum phosphide. Aluminum with hypoiodite. Al, IO. This is 3 plus because it's in group 3. 1 minus because you're going to memorize it. 1 and 3 to give us a nice plus 3 and minus 3 which will cancel. Al, we don't need to write the 1. Because there's more than one hypoiodite we put it in parentheses. Oops. Getting ahead of myself. This is aluminum. Hypoiodite. Aluminum with iodite, 3 plus, 1 minus, we need 1 and 3 to give us a nice lowest common denominator. This is Al, parentheses, Io2, parentheses 3 for aluminum, 
IO DITE. In my open math, the way you would do this would be AL, parentheses, capital I, capital O, underscore 2, close your parentheses, underscore 3. Now, aluminum with IO DATE, ion, number, charge, and total. Aluminum, IO date, 3 plus, 1 minus, need 1 and 3, gives us AL, IO, th wow, IO 3, close your parentheses 3 for aluminum, IO date. Aluminum with per IO date. Hopefully by now you're starting to see a pattern. We need one aluminum, three per IO dates. So it's AL, IO4, close your parentheses, three. For aluminum per IO date. Aluminum with sulfite. Lowest common denominator here is 6, so we're going to need 2 and 3. 2 times 3 is um, plus 6. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. It's going to cancel. So here we have, I think I'm hitting the button, AL 2, parentheses because we have more than 1, SO3, Close your parentheses 3 for aluminum sulfite. For aluminum sulfate, 3 plus, 2 minus. Again, we need three and 2 and 3 to get our plus 6 and minus 6. This is Al2, SO4 in parentheses, 3 for aluminum sulfate. Okay. At this point, we have really been, we've finished the main group metals here. And so I have four um, transition metals. Transition metals are unique in that they can have more than one charge. Here I've got copper one and copper two. Um, I also have chromium with a 2 plus charge, chromium with a 3 plus charge. Um, chromium can actually go up to plus 6. And so the only way to really specify these charges is in the name. So every compound that has this ion, its name starts with copper 1. Okay? So let's go ahead and try that. I haven't done this in a while. Ion. I prefer colors like this. Number, charge, and total. Cu, and we're going to start all the way at the top with fluorine. At this point, we have plus one, minus one. They already cancel. And so CuF is copper. Roman numeral 1 to indicate the charge was plus 1. Fluoride. Notice the only thing that's really capitalized here is that Roman numeral, so just be careful with what you're doing there. If we do copper 1 with chlorine, again the charges already cancel. So CuCl is copper 1 chlorine becomes chloride. Copper 1 with oxygen. 1 plus, 2 minus. We need 2 and 1 to give us plus 2 minus 2 and let's let it cancel. Cu2O is copper 1 oxide. Don't get cocky guys. This Roman numeral only indicates the charge. It does not indicate the number of coppers. Copper 1 with sulfur, 
This is plus 1, 2 minus, so we need 2 and 1. So you have Cu2S for copper 1 sulfide. I went ahead and made some more slides because I knew I was running out. Um, hopefully this time is the last time. Um, but we'll see. There's a whole lot of problems here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take back up with copper 1 with nitrogen. So here we have copper 1, 1 plus charge, nitrogen with 3 minus because it's in group 5. Here we need 3 and 1 to get to a nice uh, uh, canceling. 3 minus 3 is 0. So copper 1 nitride is Cu3N. Notice capital C, lowercase u. Make sure your symbols are correct, guys. And this is copper 1. Nitrogen becomes nitride. Ion number, charge in total. Copper with phosphorus, 1 plus, 3 minus. So we need 3 and 1. It's going to give us 3 plus, minus 3 to get 0. Cu3P is copper 1 phosphorus becomes phosphide. Copper 1 with io, hypoiodite plus 1, 1 minus because you're going to memorize it. Already cancels so we just need one of each. Cuio is copper 1 hypoiodite. You just name a polyatomic ion by its name. Cu and Io2 plus 1, 1 minus. You just need one of each to cancel. Cu Io2 is copper 1 iodite. Cu and Io3 plus 1. This is going to have a 1 minus charge. You just need one of each. Cu, Io3 for copper 1, Io date. Ion number, charge in total. Copper and Io4 plus 1, 1 minus. They already cancel, so you just need one of each. Cu, IO4 is copper 1 per IO date. Copper 1 with sulfite. Plus 1 charge, 2 minus charge. Here we're going to need the lowest common denominator of 2, so we're going to have 2 and 1. This is Cu2. SO3, no parentheses because there's only one sulfite ion. This is copper 1 sulfate. Uh, no, I'm sorry, sulfite. Copper and sulfate. Here the copper has a 1 plus charge because I specified. Sulfate is 2 minus, so we need 2 and 1. Cu2SO4 is copper 1 sulfate. Now, if you kind of look back at the lithium compounds, at the sodium compounds, ratio of the ions is the same here. And so at some point you're going to see the trend. Um, just keep going until you don't. I mean, until you do. If you don't, keep going until you just run out of time. Um, for copper 2, the big difference here is now your copper ion has a 2 plus charge. Copper and fluorine 
Copper 2 has a 2 plus charge. Fluorine is 1 minus because it's in group 7. Need 1 and 2. So copper Cu F2 is copper. We're going to use the charge here. 2 fluoride. Copper 2 with chlorine. 2 plus, 1 minus. Need 1 and 2. Cu Cl2 is copper 2 chlorine becomes chloride. Cu with O. 2 plus, oops, 2 minus because it's in group 6. Already cancelled, so we just need one of each. So CuO is copper 2 oxide. Copper 2 is sulfur. 2 plus, 2 minus, they already cancel. CuS is copper 2 sulfide. Cu with N. This is 2 plus, 3 minus. Lowest common denominator is 6, so we need 3 coppers, 2 nitrogens. To get plus 6 and minus 6 to cancel for 0. So Cu 3 and 2 is copper, 2 nitrogen becomes nitride. Copper 2 with um, Phosphorus, yep. Ion, number, charge in total, copper 2 and phosphorus. 2 plus, 3 minus. Just like with nitrogen, we're going to need the lowest common denominator of 6. And so Cu3P2 is copper 2 phosphide. Copper 2 with iod hypoiodite, 2 plus, 1 minus, we need 1 and 2. Cu, parentheses, Io, close your parentheses, 2. This is copper 2, hypoiodite. Cu and Io2 plus 2. This is 1 minus because you memorized it. So again we need 1 and 2. Cu, parentheses IO2, close your parentheses 2. For copper, 2 iodite. Cu and IO3. Um, this is 2 <laughs> plus 1 minus 1 and 2. Cu, more than one polyatomic, so parentheses. For copper, 2 iodate. Copper 2 per iodate would just have a 4 instead of a 3. Oops. Alright, so copper with sulf copper two with sulfite. Ion number charge in total. This is two plus, two minus, so they already cancel, so we just need one of each. Cu SO three is copper two. Sol fight. Copper with sulfate. This is 2 plus, 2 minus. CuSO4 is copper 2 sulfate. Okay. Now, hopefully, you're starting to see the trend. I'm actually not going to do chromium um, 2. Chromium 2 is going to have the exact same um, 
ratio as all of these. So like for chromium to it would have just been CR instead of CU. And so C chromium 2 fluoride would be CRF2, CrCl2, CrO for chromium 2 oxide, chromium 2 sulfide, kind of like that. And so the reason I included it here is really just to kind of give you more practice with these 2 plus transition metal ions. Um, but you are going to have the general idea here. What I want to do now is um, make sure I have enough slides still. And I don't. There we go. Okay. So now let's go ahead and look at um, ammonium and acids really quick. Um, the idea being ammonium is the only polyatomic ion that we deal with that is a cation with that positive charge. And I really want to make sure that I show you a few things when we're re dealing with that. Um, let's change colors. Let's go with this one. Ion, number, charge, and total. For ammonium, it's NH4, has a plus one charge. Fluorine has a one minus charge. So these already cancel. And so our formula is NH4F for ammonium fluoride. NH4 with chlorine, plus one, minus one. Again, these already cancel. So we have NH4. Cl for ammonium chloride. NH4 with oxygen, plus one, two minus. Lowest common denominator here is going to be two, so we need two ammoniums, one oxygen. It gives us plus two, minus two to give us a zero. This is NH4, parentheses two, Oh, if you don't have the parentheses, it would look like 42 oxygens, which is, I mean, 42 hydrogens, which is just not good. So this is ammonium oxide. If you're entering this in a discussion forum, you use math editor, you just make sure it looks just like this. If you're in MOM, what you would do in my open math is it would be parentheses, capital N, capital H, underscore four, close your parentheses, underscore two, capital O. Now for ammonium with sulfur, ion number, charge and total, NH4 and S, plus one, two minus. We're gonna need two here, one here to get to that lowest common denominator of two. So this is NH4, parentheses 2, S, for ammonium sulfide. Ammonium with nitrogen, NH4 and N, plus 1, oops, 1 plus, 3 minus because it's in group 5, 3 and 1 to give us a lowest common denominator of three. Now the formula here is NH4, three, and then N. We do not combine the Ns because ammonium is a polyatomic ion. This is indicating that it is the number of polyatomic ions, not the number of nitrogens here. And so this is ammonium nitride. Ammonium with phosphorus, one plus, three minus. We're gonna need three and one. It's NH4, parentheses, three P for ammonium phosphide. Now 
Now, if we do ammonium with hypoiodite plus one, one minus, they already cancel. So NH4IO is ammonium. Hypo IO dite. Ammonium with iodate. Number charge in total. Oh, iodite first. We didn't do iodite. Plus one, one minus. It already cancels, so we just need one of each. NH4 IO2. Turn the pen so I keep hitting that button. For ammonium iodite. Ammonium iodate is NH4 IO3. Ammonium per iodate NH4 IO4. If we look at ammonium with sulfite, NH4 SO3, 1 plus, 2 minus, we need 2 and 1. That's going to give us NH4, parentheses 2, SO3, for ammonium, sulfite. Ammonium sulfate is only different by that 4, NH4 to SO4, for ammonium sulfite, for sulfate. Okay, now let's go into acids because acids are probably the one you're going to encounter in lab um, as much as anything else, if not more. So, ion, number, charge, and total. Anything that starts with H is an, well, is an acid for now. Um, so, H and F. This is plus one because it's in group one. One minus because it's in group seven. We just need one of each. So it's HF. Now, it ends in acid because this is H. There's no oxygen, which means we have to start with the prefix hydro. So hydro, fluor, ic. Hmm. Acid. Again, don't check, don't trust my spelling to, uh, you never know. H and Cl, plus one, one minus, they already cancel, so it's HCl. There's no oxygen here, so it starts with hydro. Chlorine becomes chlor, ic, acid. Now I intentionally included oxygen here, H, O, one plus, two minus. We need two and one, and so you have H2O. Now at some point, a lot of students really like to try and um, name this. This is one of two common names I ask you to know this semester. This is water. Now there's this really cool um, thing. Let me see if I can find it really quick and show. Yeah, keep it. Let's go here. Okay. Now, about this time, you guys are probably like, why do we even care about naming? And there's a couple reasons you care about naming. And one of those is because um, at this point, you can really start. you can really start looking at what is in the food labels, what's in your shampoo, what is in these things. If you continue to 112, we actually deal with some organic compounds. By the time you leave 112, you can really start recognizing a ton of stuff. But um, anyway, this is a good start. The other is because it's really important to truly understand 
what we're dealing with. Now, um, I forget which one of these is technically correct, but I want to go ahead and point this out to you. And um, I can't remember if I did this earlier or if I only did it in the other video I did today. But remember that there was this terrible hoax a few years ago. You know, chemists have this sense of humor about um, different compounds. And so dihydrogen monoxide sounds pretty scary. And so they sent out this petition about, you know, what is what are the dangers of dihydrogen monoxide? Um, you should be concerned about DHMO. See how they even included, you know, a, abbreviation to kind of scare people further. They don't classify it as toxic, and yet it's in everything. It can even be lethal to humans in quantities as small as a thimbleful if you inhale it and so on. Why haven't you heard about it before? Um, technically, it was considered minor and manageable. And they go on to say, you know, it's in every body of water. It's in everything we drink and consume because, you know, water makes up 60% of us. Most every, all of our food has water in it too. Um, death due to accidental inhalation. Uh, solid DHMO causes t tissue burns, you know, freezer burn, you know, what's it called? Um, excessive ingestion produces a number, although usually not life-threatening side effects. Actually, there was a girl in 2013 that she drank so much water she actually did um, die. She really diluted the ions in her body down too much. Um, anyway, DHMO is a major component of acid rain you know, rain is water. Um, gaseous DHMO can cause severe burns if it's hot. In fact, steam gets much hotter than water if you guys don't know that already. Contributes to soil erosion. Yup. Leads to corrosion and oxidation of metals. You know, if you've ever left your bike outside and your chain rusted, that would be true. Um, contamination of electrical systems causes short circuits. If you've ever dropped your cell phone in water, and so on and so on. And so they go in to say, you know, all these terrible things that, you know, water does. And I don't know how many thousands of people signed to this petition, but they actually signed the petition and sent it to their congressman. So you, you know, they looked silly. Um, and so, you know, yay chemistry, you're going to be smarter than those people. All right now, let me go ahead. Okay, so let's get back to this. If we have H with nitrogen, this is plus one, three minus. By the way, this is not an ionic compound. I just wanted you to see what would happen if H and O went together. Here we've got three and one. Now, a lot of the time you want to write H3N. This is the other common name I need you to know. It's actually NH3, and this is ammonia. Now, if you kind of think ammonia is NH3, you add NH4 with the positive charge. This is ammonium. That's where that name came from, actually. So these are the two common names I need you to know, water and ammonia. OK, so let's go to phosphorus. H and P plus 1, 3 minus, because it's in group 5. We need 3 and 1. So this is H3P, no oxygen, so this is hydro. Phosphoric acid. H and IO, plus one, minus one, one of each. HIO, this now has oxygen, so there's no hydro. This is just hypo iodite becomes hypoiodous acid. H and IO2 plus one, minus one, one of each. HIO2 is iodous acid. You can't tell me that's not fun to say, guys. H and IO3 plus one, minus one, one of each. Oops. HIO3 is going to be iodate becomes iodic acid. H 
H and IO4 number, charge, and total. Uh, plus one, minus one, one of each. So H IO4 per IO date becomes per iodic acid. H and SO3 we need two hydrogens for one sulfite. Again, there's oxygen, so no hydro prefix. This is now sulfite becomes sulfuric, uh, sulfurous acid. H and SO4. Again, we need two hydrogens for every sulfate. Um, that was sulfurous acid. H2SO4 sulfate becomes sulfuric acid. This is actually one of the strongest acids there is. Um, it does all kinds of stuff. No. Oh, look at that. I was already on there. All right, so the names for these. CO, this is two nonmetals, so we're going to use prefixes here. We don't have to use prefix of one on the first one. So this is carbon monoxide. Notice like it's not monoxide. You get rid of a vowel when you do this, which is why I always tell you guys to check spelling before you go into your homework. This is carbon, two oxygens, dioxide, two nonmetals, two nonmetals. All of these are, um, well, until that point, are covalent. This is phosphorus, trichloride. Phosphorus penta chloride to indicate five. Xenon fluorine is going to become fluoride to indicate six. It's hexa fluoride. Xenon and iodide. Uh, xenon, there's just one, so it's just xenon. Iodide is now going to be tetra. Is it tetraiodide? Tetra. Oh, yeah, it's got to be tetraiodide. That sounds better. And then this is xenon dichloride. Now this is where it gets kind of fun for me. Um, now we have transition metal. Fe with S. So we know it's iron and we know it's gonna, sulfur is going to become sulfide in the name. But how on earth do you know the, the Roman numeral? So you end up coming up here to make a table. Ion number, charge, and total. Fe and S. There's one iron, two sulfurs. Charge on sulfur is two minus. You know that because it is in group um, six. So that gives us a total of minus four. To cancel and make a neutral compound, you need to have a total of positive of plus four. Only way to do that is to have a plus four charge on this ion. So this is iron four sulfide. Chromium is also a transition metal. There's one chromium, three oxygens. Oxygen has a charge of two minus, gives us a total minus, negative of six. To cancel that, we need a total positive of plus six. So the charge on chromium is six plus. So this is chromium, six oxide. Two nonmetals, so this is covalent. So this is silicon, tetrachloride. Cobalt and bromine, cobalt is a transition metal. There's one cobalt, two bromines. Bromine is in group seven, so it has a one minus charge. Gives us a total of two minus. To cancel, that means we need a plus two charge. So cobalt here is gonna be two plus. So this is cobalt, two, bromide. Same thing here. A lot of these you're gonna have to make a table for. Phosphoric acid, There's we know from ion, number, charge, and total. 
we know from acid there's an H. We know there's no hydro, so it's going to be from a polyatomic ion. Phosphoric came from phosphate, so PO4 with a 3 minus charge. So we have three hydrogens and one phosphate to really make sure that this cancels. So this is H3, PO4. Carbon tetrabromide, there's uh, prefixes, so we're just going to say C. Br, tetra means four. Hydrocyanic acid. Acid means there's an H. Cyanic came from cyanide. Plus one, minus one, we just need one of each. So HCN. Iron three phosphide. Fe. I'm still trying to line these up with this up here. Phosphorus. Uh, phosphide came from phosphorus. Iron three means that the iron has a three plus charge. Phosphorus is in group five, so it's got a three minus charge. We really only need one of each, so it's Fe. 10,4 sulfide. I'm going to make a new chart on this side. Ion, number, charge, and total. 10 is Sn. Technically, it is um, considered a transition metal. Everything um, in show, keep. Interesting. Okay, so technically, guys, the transition metals are generally considered to be here, the short stack, but 10 um, uh, lead, sometimes they will include Roman numerals down here underneath these metalloids, um, so just kind of treat this section down here as transition metals, okay? Which is why I have that example in this slide. So 10, 4 means 4 plus. Sulfur is uh, sulfide. This is in group 6, so it's got a 2 minus charge. Lowest common denominator here is 4. So to get to 4, we just need 110, 2 sulfurs. So this is Sn, S2 for 10, 4 sulfide. Prefix is here. Diphosphorus means P2. Tetrachloride means Cl4. Now, um, that's really the end of this. Hopefully you can see why in my face-to-face -face classes um, I generally give at least a class to work on this and to solve all this together. Um, I want to make sure that you really have those answers embedded here, so hopefully this helps.